Good morning, Don't Unfriend Me Nation. It is a beautiful day in Virginia. It is another cold day in Virginia, and I'm not doing what I did yesterday. I went outside and uh, board shorts and t-shirt, and nope, body said, absolutely not, you're not going anywhere outside this morning. So I've got my coffee, I've got some notes, I've got some beautiful flowers from the table, and we're inside this morning and talking about the Democrats. Everyone, probably most people, saw Joe Biden's announcement video. I guess the White House studio wasn't available or he couldn't get out of the basement to come out and say hello, or he spent too much time in Ireland, but what a beautiful production the video was. Uh, it was full of lies on both sides, pointed at the Democrats as their sterling success, as they talk about record-breaking numbers and results that unfortunately are south of the record, but they can still say that they are record-breaking and uh, revolutionizing the overall results of this presidency. Uh, it's amazing how they can spin and change the actual numbers to whatever they want because nobody seems to care. Nobody wants to care. And then not only that, they can marginalize half of America by talking about MAGA Republicans, the MAGA movement, the MAGA extremists, the Mar MAGA far-right extremists, the super MAGA extremists. I wish I knew what all the differences were. It just sounds like whatever they can throw in front of it to make a superfluous statement sound even dumber is what they do. I can't wait for the super duper quadrilistic expialidocious MAGA Republican extremists. But I will admit there are extreme sides to both parties. That's not something that I've ever denied. The issue is I don't think Republicans are under the illusion that we don't have a problem within our party, that we don't have people who think a certain way that ultimately sets us back. I think we saw this in January 6th. I think we've seen this um, uh, quite a bit come out from our party. But the Democrats believe that they've done no wrong, that while they're busy walking on water and turning water into wine, that they somehow, the proverbial caca doesn't stink. As we blame MAGA Republicans and Democrats take amazing credit for all of the great things in your life right now, I'm going to point out a few things. Since we're being called a name, and we've been called deplorables, racist, xenophobic, homophobic, transphobic, uh, we have been called um, gun-grabbing, Bible-thumping, flyover states, uneducated, racists, Nazis. Uh, wow, there's more euphemisms and idioms in, in those statements than I could possibly go ahead and list for you. I've got some names for Democrats. And I'm, I'm one of those that when people say libtards, I get upset. I tell them that's ridiculous. Stop it. Or democrats. It's first of all, you sound like you're two years old. If you have to insult people by making up names for them, um, you've already lost the argument. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use names that stick and fit because it's the results. I've taken some notes. And uh, I want to make sure that I present them to you properly. Executive Order Democrats would be a great name for them. President Joe Biden has signed 112 executive orders and 134 presidential memoranda, along with 415 proclamations and 85 notices overall. And that's not even redlining all of Donald Trump's policy and his own executive orders, which were combating Obama's and putting them back in place. Nobody mentions that. How about this? Women aren't real Democrats. Started with Katani Brown Jackson, who was the SCOTUS nominee, who was asked a simple question, please define what a woman is. And she wasn't able to because she's not a scientist. I'm not a botanist, but I can tell you what flower this is, and it's certainly not a, a pine tree. I didn't go to school for that. It just came out of nowhere. How about women aren't men and men aren't women? I think that's pretty uh, standard in science. I think w w the court and the jury are not out on this one. However, Democrats tell us now that all of the struggles of women's rights 
The feminist movements, wave one and two, wave three and four were basically man-hating tropes. But let's look at feminism one and two, burning our bras, demanding equal rights in the workplace, equal pay, not to be sexually assaulted at work. All the things that are pretty darn good for my daughter, my wife, and my mom. Well, now they're telling us that women aren't women anymore. In fact, it's not that women aren't specifically women. It's that men can be women. And not only are men better at everything else now, they're also better at being women. The Democratic Party, folks. How about lie to the people, Democrats? We can talk about $150 billion in Ukraine, lying about Ukraine losing the war. We found this out from the not whistleblower. Uh, I guess you would say leaker is the best word for it. We found out there's boots on the ground and rising tensions in the Sudan and Africa. China and Taiwan are on the brink. And it's really choose your own war adventure for Joe Biden. You remember two and a half years ago, I don't have the clip, I'll try to find it, where Joe Biden and I was asked a simple question, what do you think Joe Biden's presidency will look like? And I said, he'll be worse than Jimmy Carter. And he has been. And the second thing I said is when they asked, do you think he'll be reelected? And I said, well, there's only one way he will be if he starts a war because wartime presidents, we don't change horses in midstream. At least that has what it has been in the past. Joe Biden is definitely on the precipice of getting his wish, which will be a second term if he does, simply because America doesn't have a choice. How about the deny, deny, deny it, Democrats? From inflation, which is Putin's fault, gas prices, which is Putin's fault, to fentanyl on the border, to the amount of illegal immigration that we have, everything that is anything is always Donald Trump's fault. It's always Republicans' fault. And there is never any credibility. If a Democrat would like to tell me one time that Joe Biden has stood on the pulpit and simply said, I own this, I made a mistake, I, I, I've got $10,000 for you. Now, I am not the MyPillow guy. I can't offer you a, a $5 million and then have to go ahead and pay it because I opened up my mouth. Please show me an apology from Joe Biden on the national stage owning a mistake that he made without blaming Republicans, without blaming blaming Donald Trump, or without blaming a foreign leader. And uh, I'll see what I can do about getting you that money. I hope you'll take a check. It'll bounce. Um, everything is free, Democrats. Remember, free college, voting rights. Every, every single person is going to have the ability to vote from their home in an electronic system. We talked about that. Um, and everything else Biden has abandoned during his tenure. Why does he continue to lie? Why won't he deliver the things that he promised? Well, the reason why is because he is now facing six SCOTUS overturns from his policy as unconstitutional. We know this with the college forgiveness. This is going to be founded as being unconstitutional. Some of the things he has done with gun legislation has been found to be unconstitutional. We know that Obamacare and the mandate was founded to be unconstitutional. This guy's going to be 0 for 6 by the time it's all said and done. And that should tell you something, Democrats. You have a party that believes in the Constitution and one who wants to circumvent it. That is his legacy, whether you want to admit it or not. Border nightmare Democrats. Title 42, 2 million illegal immigrants, fentanyl. And now their shift to pretend that Republicans are responsible for it all. On day one, we saw an immediate, complete reversal from Donald Trump's policies, which worked. We had record low crossings from illegal immigrants. Drug seizures were higher. We saw fentanyl stop being uh, distributed across all 50 states. It started to lower. Things were changing. And Democrats decided to throw a hissy fit because of a wall that was already paid for and how he reappropriated defense spending into the wall because they blocked all funding and any possibility of funding for Donald Trump. I'm sorry, a border wall is national defense. I don't have a problem with that. You notice how they didn't try to impeach him for that one. How about veterans aren't us Democrats? The lies about the VA budget, this 22% budget cut, which is not true, it's a complete lie. I did a show on that last week. Go take a look down below here in the feed and you'll see it. There are no 22% budget cuts. It's not allowing the VA to exponentially grow to a number of over a half a trillion dollars by 2030. They already spend 240 billion and there's only a 2% increase in veterans over the next 20 years. There's no justification for the increase in budget 
And they want to know, the Republicans specifically, where the money goes. Democrats really could care less or couldn't care less. Let me correct that. How about zero accountability Democrats? Classified documents, no big deal. It's just, it, it, it's a huge deal when Trump does it. The whole world's gonna end. World War III, national secrets, nuclear codes. Oh my gosh, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. But 76 boxes spread out from here to Tecumseh for Joe Biden, it's no big deal. In fact, because he was honest on the first phone call and said, you have all the boxes. Well, then they found more. Then he called and said, but this time you really, really have them. Oh, well, then they found more. And then he said they really, 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 really have all the documents. And then they just found more. Interesting. Clutch your pearls, Democrats. How about their own quid pro quo? Impeachment happened to Donald Trump over a phone call. A phone call that Donald Trump should have made which was, we're sick of giving you weaponry. We're sick of doing this. We're sick of doing that. We're sick of giving you a blank check. You need to handle corruption in your country. You need to start moving to NATO-specific initiatives so you can join NATO and clean up your act. And by the way, there's a lot of corruption from Joe Biden because we heard on a tape him holding over a billion dollars to Ukraine and threatened to fire the prosecutor. And if they did not fire the prosecutor, that money would not be paid by Barack Obama. He said it on tape. He laughed about it. He even called the guy a son of a bitch. I'm surprised he didn't call him the N-word. This is Joe Biden after all, but that's not quid pro quo. And then let's look what he said with Afghanistan. Either you fight the war this way, either you go ahead and allow Taliban forces to do A, B, C, or D, or you're not gonna have air support and we're cutting off intel for when we transfer the power of, of ownership over to you and we pull out of Afghanistan. That's quid pro quo, but once again, Democrats don't seem to care. How about hush money? We care so much about Stormy Daniels' hush money. We've known about this for seven years. Wasn't a big deal. Every prosecutor and their mother dropped it and didn't want to go ahead and take it. Why all of a sudden is it a big deal? Well, the same reason the rape case is coming up. The same reason George is coming up. They are going to stack the deck against Donald Trump. And it's not like he doesn't do enough to damage himself. They have to go ahead and fabricate these things. We're looking at a modern day lynching when it comes to using the courts against a former president. But hush money from HRC when she was actually fined for making up the dirty dossier, the steel dossier, using a foreign spy to collect assets against Donald Trump, which were all fictitious. Nobody mentioned anything about that. How about Obama for campaign finance and the violations in campaign finance and having to pay a penalty and a fine to pay that back? How about Bill Clinton settling out of court with the hush hush money? No, not for the cigars and not for Monica Lewinsky in the blue dress, but for the other women that accused him of sexual assault and rape that Hillary Clinton shunned and destroyed. But we're supposed to believe all women in Me Too movement. Yeah, right. How about this? How about transitory Democrats? You remember inflation? When inflation, when inflation went up to 4% and Joe Biden's like, bah! This is just transitory. You won't feel this for very long. It's just gonna be a little bit of time. Well, shy of 10% later, we're all feeling it. Everyone understands what inflation feels like. It's in our food. It's in everything we pay for, from energy to our gas, to mercantile, to commodities, to materialistic items as stereos and iPods and phones. We're feeling it across every single facet of our wallet. But remember, it's just transitory. It'll go away any time, two and a half years later. How about Afghan Democrats? Interesting, the Taliban have taken severe action against women, taking away the ability to go to school, making sure that they are treated properly and put in their place by beating them and subjecting them to beheadings. How about all the jobs and the freedoms that women possessed in Afghanistan that our brave men and women fought for for almost 21 years, all was given up in a snap of the fingers. From Bagram Air Base, which was given up, from strategic positions, forward operating bases, from giving security forces to the Taliban, to 13 American lives lost. And what did Joe Biden do? Absolutely nothing but release the people who did that, leaving biometric data and scanners available so they could go door to door and find the non-government officials, the NGOs who supported the United States who were Afghanis, who are still in country today. All the Americans that didn't get out until how many months after? And still some are not able to get out based upon the American government completely forgetting about them. Whose fault was that? Simple. 
It's Donald Trump's. But of course, who else would it be? How about the batshit Democrats? Because honestly, at this point, I am done with not giving a name that is deserving. From lopping off children's genitalia to aborting them altogether, to banning parents, to allowing age and appropriate material and indoctrination of our children, from revisionist history to statues of Lincoln coming down from $2.5 billion in riots and damages to our democracy is in jeopardy. From a bunch of knuckleheads on January 6th, the Dems are running on the following. And don't kid yourself, it's what they always do. Get Donald Trump at all costs. That's their platform. That's all they've been doing. That's all they will continue to do. Spend more, make less. Lie to the people, executive overreach, expand states that should never be states like Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. Heck, the Founding Fathers said Washington, D.C. is not a state and should never be a state. It's a district, by the way. And if you think it's a state, you need to go back to civics. Destroy the Constitution and limit its power to expand their own because that's what the Constitution does, folks. It limits the power of the U.S. government and it protects the people from our government. And then lastly, erase the patriarch and matriarch and replace it with Pat, who is now Patricia. Last but certainly not least, let's destroy any opposition who opposes their radical progressive Marxist demagoguery, which won't be many because I forgot they want your guns as well. Folks, don't be fooled. 2024 may be, unfortunately, a binary choice, but there is one choice. I am a Republican and a conservative still because I have a lack of options. The Republican Party is not perfect. They make mistakes consistently, and I will continue to call them out for their mistakes. But what I'm not going to do is pretend that this stuff is normal and that the Democrats have the moral high ground to insult MAGA Republicans, Republicans, conservative centrists, um, libertarians, constitutionalists, and lump us all into one easy, tight-fit package when honestly, as always, that's what the Democrats are. That's what the Democrats do. And if you listen closely, all they're doing is projecting their own failures onto everyone else. Folks, thanks for watching the Don't Unfriend Me show. I'll be here tonight with Olivia and uh, Leroy and Amy, I believe. We are going live at 8 o'clock. Thank you for watching the Don't Unfriend Me show. Stop by the Don't Unfriend Me store at thedumbshow.com. Pick yourself up a cool shirt, hats, coffee, mugs, all that type of stuff. 10% goes back to veterans. And you can get 10% off by using DUM10, D-U-M-1-0. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like, share, follow, and subscribe. I will see you tonight. God bless.